People all over the state, including on the Connecticut shoreline, remembering Dr. Mel's life. He suffered from multiple myeloma and often reached out to people at the William Backus Hospital in Norwich. Hospital officials, just like so many of you, have memories of how Dr. Mel touched those lives. He spoke twice at Cancer Survivors Day, and the reason he spoke twice was he was such an inspiration to um, the cancer survivors that attended. We asked him to come back. I mean, he... Um, he epitomizes what we at Bacchus Hospital say all the time, which is um, cancer should be a chapter in somebody's life and not the whole story. For as long as I've been here, since 1979, uh, my wife and I have appreciated watching Dr. Mellon. Of course, the rest of the meteorologists there and his passing is certainly uh, a very sombering and sorrow time for us and our thoughts go out to the family. I, I liked him as a weatherman. I thought he was outstanding and, um, and uh, I'm I'll probably miss, miss watching him. My neighbors and friends um, always had something um, good to say about him whenever uh, the topic came up, and um, many times they would quote him, Dr. Mel said. <laughs> and, uh, so um, it was um, part of the neighborhood, part of the family in a way, mm. and uh, will be missed. Coming from down south, because I'm from down south, um, coming from up north is, you know, was very different. So um, he, he, you know, I could just tell that he was, he was a good man and he had a very good heart. As soon as he got to the parking lot, he was, everybody knew Dr. Mel and they, um, he couldn't get from the parking lot to the speaking engagement because he would take the time to um, talk to everybody, um, sign autographs, and um, just everybody knew and loved Dr. Mel. Everybody knew Dr. Mel. That'll do it for News 8 at 5.30. Now, for a look at the news at 6, we'll send it over to Keith and Ann. Good evening, everybody. I'm Keith Coons. I'm Ann Nyberg. Tonight, the News 8 family is saying goodbye to a beloved colleague and friend. Today, after a long battle with multiple myeloma, meteorologist Dr. Mel Goldstein passed away at the age of 66. Darren Kramer worked with him a long, long time, and he joins us now with a look back on Mel's life. As we all did, I'll tell you, a lot of people in this state knew a lot about Dr. Mel. Dr. Mel, the friend, the scientist, the teacher, the musician, the cancer advocate, a renaissance man, if you will. Mel touched a lot of lives in this state. Here's a look back at his. Uh, still these bands of very, very heavy snow uh, going through the area. Just about everyone in Connecticut knew Dr. Mel Goldstein. Mel the meteorologist. Connecticut's uh, weather source, and I wanted to show you a big radar picture. Dr. Mel the teacher. It looks like the storm is moving away. Dr. Mel, the guy with the big smile. Mel grew up in the quiet North Boston suburb of Swampscott, Massachusetts. His passion for weather started early. As a boy, he went through three hurricanes and other big storms, and they fascinated him. He got degrees from Penn State and NYU, and he found the love of his life. Everything with him is a new way. It's exciting. He's got imagination. I was so lucky to marry him. In the 70s, Professor Goldstein created the meteorology program at Westcon and built a state-of-the-art weather center. Then the broadcasting bug bit him. First it was radio in 1971. It was one station, then 20. Then came television, first an all-news cable station. Then in the 1980s, Mel Goldstein walked into the door here at WTNH and Connecticut fell in love with him. We're talking about a man here that isn't just a legend in our state, but this is about a man that has defined an entire category. You can't have a conversation with somebody in the state of Connecticut and talking about weather without talking about Dr. Mel. People gravitated toward him because he loves what he does, and you can see it in his face every single day. For 25 years, he guided Connecticut through everything Mother Nature could throw at us. Floods, blizzards, hurricanes, and tornadoes. Mel's life changed forever with a diagnosis of multiple myeloma, a cancer of the plasma cells in his bone marrow. Doctors gave him 33 months to live. He fought and won for 16 years. Every day you take one more step and you try as hard as you can to, 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 to learn and, and, to, and to grow and to not fear uh, life but to thrive 
yeah, with life. And thrive he did, writing books, leading the weather department here at WTNH, and inspiring thousands of people around the country fighting cancer along with him. Mel retired here from News 8 just last year, but he wasn't done yet. His years of experience helping to guide us all through Tropical Storm Irene, the same storm that tore apart his home on the shoreline. Every few seconds there's a big pound, uh, a big bang, but we're going to have our job and clean things up. And though he is gone, Dr. Mel's legacy lives on, from a scholarship fund for meteorology students at Westcon to a research fund for multiple myeloma at Yale, and the thousands and thousands of lives he touched with his wisdom and his contagious smile. Each day is, is, is something that is precious and that we should take advantage of that to its fullest. And I'll tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than the feeling of helping other people. That means the world to me. Mm. What we know here in this room, right. working with him so long, that a lot of folks don't, is that, and we were talking about this, Mel right. Goldstein was a tough guy. Absolutely. He was in this room often in great pain. Mm. And, uh, you know, did his job with a smile and class right. and dignity and did it every day, and he loved it so much. You know that. We loved it when he played the piano mm -hmm. right here in yeah. the studio and from he, time to time. And he was always the guy who was looking ahead. I spoke to him in just the past week, and at that point he was still talking about continuing to be on the radio at more radio stations and possibly even write a newspaper column. So that's just the kind of guy he always was. He never quit. never gave up. Never yeah. gave up. Absolutely. Darren, thank, thank you, Darren. You. And of course, news meteorologists across the state are also mourning the passing of Dr. Mel. News ace Bob Wilson spoke with meteorologists at some other Connecticut news stations. And Bob joins us now live from Hartford with more on that side of the story. Well, Dr. Mel is known as a straight-talking guy. Gave you the weather forecast straight away. Today, everybody remembered Mel the man. Dr. Mel, how much he gave of himself, the time he took for everybody. And no matter which side of the dial you were on, today is a sad day in the broadcasting world. What I remember most about Dr. Mel was how much he really loved the weather. And the, the worse it got, the better he liked it. <laughs> I mean, he, uh, he really was into weather. And yet, you know, he... He never considered himself a celebrity doing the weather. Uh, at the same time, the way he approached people, the way he treated people, the way he spoke to people on the air and off the air made him a celebrity, a big celebrity. I just admire him because I worked the morning shift for four years and I'm a healthy individual. And I found that pretty hard. And here Dr. Mel was working this shift, which is difficult as it is, battling cancer at the same time. And I think that's really an inspiration to all of us. It's a great loss. Um, what Dr. Mel was to me uh, was a friendly but formidable competitor. Uh, I'll miss his competence. I'll miss his friendly demeanor and I'll miss his big smile. When I was in fourth grade, I met him at the Volvo Tennis Tournament in New Haven, and I told him, I was like, I love the weather, and he couldn't have been any more happy to talk to me about weather and said, hey, why don't you and your mom come in this weekend and check out the studio and you can watch you know, us do the newscast. So I remember, you know, this was probably 20 years ago at least, going into New Haven and watching him put together the forecast. Uh, he helped me, uh, showed me how to make the five-day forecast and what he did. And to this day, I still remember that as one of the coolest things an elementary school student could do. And he sort of solidified my love of the weather. And Dr. Mel touched so many lives. One thing I'll always remember is how hard it was that he worked through that pain every day with a smile. I'm Bob Wilson reporting live in Hartford News. And tonight's state leaders are also remembering Dr. Mel. Senator Richard Blumenthal called him a dear friend and a great public servant who made every day brighter regardless of the weather. Governor Dana Malloy says Dr. Mel was a Connecticut icon. Well, yeah, what a guy. Uh, just a tremendous personality. Uh, knew his stuff. Uh, cared about people. Um, it, it, it came through the TV. It certainly came through the classroom at uh, Western Connecticut. I mean, he really was a, a, a ground breaking meteorologist. Governor Malloy also said that Dr. Mel always handled himself with grace and dignity and class. The governor also said Mel always made sure the people of Connecticut were prepared for any dangerous weather on the horizon. 
And so funeral arrangements have now been made for Dr. Mel. Services will be held this Friday morning at 1030 in the morning at the Robert E. Shore Funeral Home in New Haven. He will be buried later at a service at a cemetery in Clinton.